<coughs> Alrighty, hello and welcome to Rad Linux. So I am on a fresh install of Rad Linux. No, of Pop OS. <laughs> My fresh install of Pop OS. I'm gonna do a quick update while we chat for a second. Uh, well, I, I have recently um migrated my personal PC over to Pop! OS. I have been using Ubuntu for a very long time, um, probably about, uh, probably since I started my Linux journey. I, I think I started on like Ubuntu when I bought a Linux specific PC. This is a System76 computer, and I've always kind of wanted to have Pop! OS on it, but I bought it before Pop! was released. Um, frankly, it's kind of weird that I chose to go with Pop! because it's a little bit of a step backwards i've been using uh what was ostensibly uh an i3 setup i've gone and done that and had a lot of fun doing it over the pandemic but i was like well you know whatever i want to try this out and i've actually been really surprised i've been kind of into um what's been going on with uh pop os it's 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 more comfortable than i expected it to be it's not quite as comfortable as i want it to be like it's not i3 but it's quick, it's nice, um, and it's a good setup. I don't know, it's pretty solid, in my opinion. But I have had some quirks, some weird things that have been bothering me. One of them was a, an issue with bootloaders. Uh, so, uh, Pop! OS does not use Grub, which we're all most uh, Linux users are probably comfortable with, or have had some sort of experience or interaction with. Um, they use this system D boot. I don't actually have a problem with that. System Dboot is fine. Um, but I'm a person who likes to play with different kernels. Um, I enjoy messing around with different kernels. Uh, and in particular, I use Licorix uh, when I game. I know people don't necessarily agree, but I, I think that I get a boost in performance. Uh, really, it's a boost in um, or, or a reduction in latency. Uh, I, I think I get a, a much uh, smoother experience in my games when I use Licorice. It's not necessarily more FPS, I'm not producing more power, but I, I do feel like I, I have been getting a better experience there. Uh, so when I switched over, I said, well, maybe the pop kernel is fine. Um, but uh, again, I, I started playing a game and I, I was feeling like I was having the same problems I was having with the Ubuntu generic kernel. So I decided, okay, fine, I'm going to install Licorix. Uh, now, the issue with uh, with Licorix, um, or well, the issue with, with System D boot, rather, is that unlike Grub, uh, Grub will catch like anything you have in your in your uh, your boot. You know, it'll it'll create a listing for you automatically. It's a little bit different in. Uh, Super secure here. Uh, well, it's a little bit different here uh, when we work in uh, system D boot. So we're gonna go to boot uh, EFI and check this out. Okay, so here we have uh, an EFI section and your loader section. Um, we're gonna go to the loader to first. So we're gonna go towards our loader. Um, and so, so unlike Grub, uh, you kind of have to manually add entries uh, to your bootloader uh, when you use EFI loader. So uh, we have these entries, and Pop has it set up so that these entries um, update themselves, right? And they must have some kind of script or something set up in the way that they uh, do their updates and stuff that... Uh, basically will create pop os current and pop os old so you will always have two generic kernels just like most distributions uh available to you when you boot up uh upon first opening your pc if you choose to uh we're gonna you choose to, uh, to adjust this this loader, right? So um, I can't remember. Oh, geez, what's the exact? If it's um, timeout equals. I should double check this, but um, 
Yeah, so it should be that uh, you add a timeout variable here. I'm actually gonna, let me, let me real fast do this where I double check and make sure that I'm not giving you wrong information. It doesn't have to be right information, but it can't be too wrong. <laughs> um, oh, geez, Louise. But uh, yeah, so so basically, you know, you can set up the um, your, your this loading con or this conf. To, uh, yeah, okay. So it, I was close. I was close. Um, so there is no space or no equals. It's just timeout. Okay. Um, and so that if we save that now, that will give us. I mean, it'll give me ten seconds to. Uh, do something with the bootloader before the bootloader just boots uh, off of the the default kernel. Um, so that's that's a pretty pretty basic. If you I, if you're playing with kernels, you should always have it load to whatever kernel choice menu, whether it be Grub or this this loader here, some D loader or whatever it is you choose, um, because you're not going to want to be sitting there having to like smash shift on a, on a boot in order to like recover from a, a bad kernel update, which is possible, uh, especially if you're running like a rolling release kernel like Licorix, because Licorix is a rolling release kernel. Um, so I'm going to real fast, uh, I'm going to also install um, going to install Licorix. But uh, all right, so here here's an ex here are examples uh, of um, what these these bootloader entries look like. Um, and uh, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, shouldn't have too many issues with them. Did I put that in wrong? No, there we go. Do, 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 do. So, this is really easy to do. Installing Licorix is like it's nothing. Uh, oh, what's going on? Something. Oh, 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 yeah, this is still, this, I forgot, this is still freaking updating in the background, um, but of course, it's probably, it's installing kernels and stuff, all right, well, I'll do that in a second, then. Oh, oh, okay, interesting, yeah, uh, so, This is a little bit of a different setup. Um, essentially, it's like doing your grub. Um, it's like doing your grub entries, but like manually. And you have to do like one for each one, like set your your options for each one. It's a little bit, I don't know, whatever. It's not, it's not, it's not super crazy. Uh, it's just, you know, I figure why not show how this works. So the, the thing about it is that, yeah, you have, like, Pop has it set up so that this will automatically push the last kernel that you have uh, to the top. Or really, it'll give you, I think, the, the, the kernel that it recognizes as newest, right? So if you install Licorix, and Licorix is ahead of the Pop kernel, which actually just is the inverse. So I, I just installed a uh, updated to a Pop uh, kernel that was... Uh, fifteen five and and Licorix hadn't I, I haven't installed the fifteen five yet for Licorix, so um, so that's interesting, right? That you can you can basically uh, like it'll 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 just put like the order will be like um you know Papa OS current Papa OS old Papa OS current will always I think just be the newest kernel available that it recognizes and then the second newest kernel, uh, so that's that was working out fine for me until. Uh, it's actually this latest pop generic kernel bumped uh, the kernel I'd been using, the Licorix kernel I'd been using that I felt was giving me the best performance out of the out of the running. So I was not in available 
in either the Pop! OS Current or what will soon become the Pop! OS uh, uh, Old or whatever. So I had a problem. I, I needed to create my own loader com, uh, or my loader, my lo own loader entry. Um, and, and frankly, it was confusing me at first. Uh, so let's go through, uh, and let's, uh, let's install Lickrix here. So pretty straightforward now that this isn't holding me down. Well, I'll, I'll do that in a second, but, um, Yeah, so so uh, so yeah. When, once this uh, installs, we'll I'll, I'll go through and we'll show you how how to create your own uh, your own loader entry here, uh, so that you can load whatever you'd like, um, right? So it doesn't have to be, um, you know, it could be a, a kernel that you you're, you're playing with. It could be something that's like a kernel that you're 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 hoping to play with or whatever I, I i think that there's supposed to be some sort of uh manual tools kernel stub i don't understand how to use it i don't i really don't um And so I'm, I'm sure that you can do this in maybe even a smoother way, but I'm going to show you the most annoying way first. Okay, how to just do it manually and, uh, you know, figure out the kernel stuff, then good for you. Uh, or if somebody has better information, please. Um, okay, so here we, here we go. We have Pop! OS Current, Pop! OS Old, Current.com. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, first things first, I'm going to copy uh, one of these pop or we'll just say current why not the comps and we're gonna i'm gonna rename it um Lickrix. and it has to be dot comp i've realized that so i didn't i didn't think that the extension would matter but it does so it has to be Lickrix dot com uh or, or it has to be dot com you can name it whatever you'd like it can be you know whatever whatever it is that you enjoy so i'm actually gonna say um because well hang on let's uh Five fifteen, we'll say five fifteen zero. Uh, uh, no, numlock. What are you doing? Uh, five fifteen zero dash six dot one. So now I know exactly which one this is. Um, and we're gonna hit enter here, and that's gonna create another entry. Um. And uh, so I'm actually just going to cat. Oh, oh, oh I'm gonna nano. Uh, just because this is it's the most portable. I, I'm I just I just don't care. I'm not a Vim versus Emacs person. Um, but we're gonna. Uh, you know what? Hang on. I I just I don't know why I'm not doing this. Uh, this is my preference, anyways. And I freaking hate these gaps. But I guess it makes more sense if I'm gonna be. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. It's fine. Uh okay. So I'm gonna go pseudo sue over here. Uh awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, uh now I'm going to go to boot. So in boot we have these files, the uh, init image files and the VM Linus Linus uh Linus, I don't I don't know how to pronounce any of that, but VM Linus files. Um, and uh, so if we actually go to EFI, we're going to go to EFI, and then there should be a pop, pop folder in there. Um, we're going to find that there is these files, right? So this is, this is what... Um, the uh, other configuration files are pointing at, right? So if I go back to, um, no, what am I doing? 
Yeah, bye, looters. Entry. So we're gonna. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm already, I'm already in there. I should have, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So this is what these are pointing at, right? So pop OS current. Um. Or actually, I guess I whatever. This this is the same as pop OS current, but it it's it's pointing towards um things that are in this folder, this pop folder in the EFI uh, section. Now, these init RDs are the same as, as these init RDs, and the VM Linuses are the same as these VM Linus files. Um, these are named .EFI, and I don't know uh, if that's really necessary, because I don't think that I changed that uh, when I did my, this is my own computer, but you know, you can change whatever you want to be whatever you want. I mean, it really doesn't matter as long as I think as you point at the right file. So let's say I'm over here. Blah, 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 blah. So we're going to go to CD um, boot again. Uh, and so we have these these files. Well, I'm going to first things first, I'm going to make a directory in uh, boot. Well, I don't need to do that, but EFI, uh, EFI. Uh, and then, so the same way that we have like a pop OS folder that leads us to uh, all, all these, I'm gonna create one just for my LiquorX kernels that I wanna make sure are, are always accessible to me, even if I upgrade to other kernels. So we're gonna go boot EFI, EFI, LiquorX. And I'm actually just gonna make capitalize it for consistency because uh, all the other ones in that folder will have the same thing. And so now we're going to ls uh, and you can see, cool, now we have this LiquorX folder here along with the pop OS folder and the recovery folder, which is something that we'll also um, bring up. Uh, so we have this folder. I'm going to actually change to it. So we're going to go to EFI, EFI, and we're going to go to LiquorX. Oh, oh, oh. Um, cool. Now there's nothing in here. Uh, and the the thing is that we're, we will want something in here. We need to get our uh, image and our uh, our inner RD files and our, our VM Linus files in there. So uh, I actually just changed over here, but I'm actually just going to switch back. Um, and what I would like to do is I'm going to have to copy these files. So let's say I want to, I want, I want the LiquorX kernel. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we're just going to have the LiquorX kernel for this example. Um, so I'm going to copy uh, init rd. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to actually change to boot, right? Why am I not in boot? Oh, because I just ls. I didn't. No. Okay, whatever, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing here. So I'm in boot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh in it rd image uh we're gonna say 515 uh zero because that's gonna bring us i'm gonna tab complete that and it's gonna give us our in it rd image file for liquorix um and it's gonna copy that file and we're gonna choose to copy that to boot efi efi uh, Liquorix. Oh, um, now you have to do this as root. Uh, I, I think you, I, I think you have to do it as, as Sue or like, as like a temporary root user. Cause I don't know that you can actually, um, even get in to play around in this unless you're working as root. So be careful. This is definitely a more complex task. So I wouldn't just do this if I don't know a whole ton about using the terminal. As we've seen lately, uh, the terminal is very powerful. It's very cool. Uh, it does have the potential to do negative things and, and playing around with your boot partition is a good way to do negative things to your computer. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy, we're gonna just hit up to bring us back to the last command. Uh, and I'm going to copy this time. We're going to copy this file here. So you can actually just go highlight that middle click it. Boom. We're going to 
copy that. And so now we're going to go back to that file. So we're going to go to uh, EFI, EFI, uh, or that folder rather. We're going to go Lithrix. And so now I have these two, these two things here. This is all I need. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to go back up to here. So this is the uh, the entry file that I had started working on. Uh, and we're going to want to back that all the way out. And we're going to go... So so the, the way that this works is that it basically automatically recognizes that this you're in your boot EFI. So Linux, and this is where the, um, the VM Linux uh, image goes, Linus, whatever image goes. Um, and so it'll automatically know you're in EFI, and then it, you have to specify from your EFI um, folder where where more information is, so or where, where your image is. So we're gonna go EFI. We're gonna go for me. I'm gonna be doing Lickerix because that's the name of the folder that I created. We're gonna uh, so then we're gonna go backslash, and I'm, I'm gonna uh, copy this. All right. So we're gonna uh, Control Shift C and go over here. Control Shift V. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. And now I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, oh, actually, no, 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 no. That was wrong. That was wrong. You see, see how easy it is to do this. I actually wanted the VM Linus image. No, come on. Come on. Image here. So VM Linus goes in the Linux section and init RD obviously is where the init RD goes. Um, copy that again. And we're going to go over here and I'm going to just square that out. We're going to save that in there. Now, if you would like to make boot options, uh, change your boot options, then you can change them in this line. Uh, I don't have any various needs to do that. Um, as long as you know you don't mess with the root, uh, the UUID, that's like where it's directing to which like hard drive you're booting off of. Uh, and you want to be booting off of likely the same hard drive that you are using to store your operating system i would guess um but not necessarily but you know most likely now uh, i believe that there's the cool thing is that you don't really have to like um update anything like your grub or whatever so uh, i believe now let's uh let's uh just uh i think I mean, whoever thought that Windows Q or like, you know, what I'm saying Super Q is a powerful. That's like a, that's like literally the worst. I hate it so much. OK, well, oh, let's, let's update this. I don't even know why I'm doing this because it doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, is it because it's running? No, I don't know. Because I'm not going to use this. I'm going to burn this VM as soon as we're done this video. But I just have it. I hate. I hate seeing notification dots. I hate it. It's a it's a, a peeve of mine, if you will. Um, but there we go. We're installed. We're all set. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, Pop is Pop is really not bad. It's pretty responsive. The new Cosmos desktop desktop is is pretty convenient, pretty nice. I I like it. I mean, there are quirks. There are things about it that. I can't say I'm like a hundred percent in love with, but that's why, I mean, in the end, ultimately I'm probably going to need to, um, to, to make a change, uh, on how I choose, uh, on how I, how I work with Linux. I'm probably going to need to either switch to Arch. Or I'm going to switch to like Debian testing or something. I'm intrigued by what Chris Titus is doing right now. So we're going to restart this VM here. All right, here we go. Cool, cool. Oh, okay. So I didn't, I should have, I should have changed. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. So I forgot to change the name. I, I can change the name in that loading conf. Or in the, in the entry configuration, uh, to make sure that uh, this says maybe Lickerix or whatever. But it also, see, you can see it shows it shows what, the, the name of the kernel, um, or the name of the kernel configuration file at least. So, uh, so 
I can easily discern between the fact. So I would like to boot directly into Lickrix 5.15.06. Um, oh. What's going on? Going into this super secure setup I have. Let's see. Okay, well that didn't work. Let's see. Let's see why that didn't work. I am not a hundred percent sure why that didn't work. So let me double check uh, what I was doing. My own system. So we're go I'm going to go. Um, now I'm going to do some stuff on my own computer. You don't need to see any of it. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, oh. Okay, hang on. I think I see the mistake that I have made. Let's check it out. Let's see if I let's see if that's the right mistake I made. All right. So we're going to go to sudo su. I'm going to turn myself into a root user for the time being um need my super secure password uh and then we're gonna go to boot efi we're gonna go to the uh loader section and then i'm gonna go to entries um and i'm gonna okay so here here's a here's a little mistake i made i forgot to signify uh that we're in supposed to be in this folder while i'm here i'm just going to change the title to uh licorice so uh five yeah whatever i mean it doesn't really freaking matter um all right and we're going to save that and i'm gonna uh so i'm going to we will so you, you saw here let's go real fast so just yeah as you can see here that it didn't boot into the right kernel and instead booted into the generic kernel because that would be the default uh, according to our loader configuration file would be to go to this one which is the the newest available one um if we show our boot uh right so the the, the newest available ones are generic um because of the the numbering structure here it counts by number uh and then so it considers Licorix kernel to be an older kernel variation um and that's cool. So that means that uh, it did what's supposed to do, which is load into the right kernel. And then now we can prove on reboot uh, that it will load into the correct kernel. Um, here we go. So let's go to the Lickrix kernel. Uh, now that I, uh, I, I appropriately set up that configuration file, here we are. I'm going to check in here. We're going to confirm that, in fact, I did uh, choose the correct kernel. So you name R will give us the kernel name. And here we are in Lickrix. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, I don't love it, frankly. That's, this is one of the few things. I think system deboots pretty quick. I think it's like efficient. I, I do think it's a little bit faster than Grub. Uh, worked as a bootloader, but it is annoying that it's not more automated. Um, and I'm sure that I could devise a way to create a script or something that would do this for me. Uh, I'm just really not that kind of user. Um, I rarely find myself sitting down to write scripts. Uh, because that's a little more like coding, and I actually don't do that super well. But if you would like to set up your own uh, configuration file for whatever reason in system deboot, this is a way to do it. Um, now, I personally like to do this because I do believe that the Lickrix kernel does give me benefits based on my hardware setup. Um, and based on my computer setup. So this, the, I, I find this to be beneficial 
um, for myself. But again, you can use this to probably to try an infinite amount of kernels. Um, if you just like to test out new kernels, try out new stuff, play with different things. Um, because, you know, there's also the Xan mod kernels. Uh, a lot of people seem to like that one. I don't get the same results uh, as other people do, so I, I stick to, to Lickrix. But uh, some people like Xan mod for gaming, specifically for gaming or, or desktop usage. Because um, the gener generic kernels are, 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 th are especially in, in more server-based distributions, uh, are, are, are thought to be usually like uh, higher latency, which is problematic for gaming. Higher latency, more, more throughput, more power. Uh, but I, I would like the latency so I can have a smooth gaming experience, smooth 68, you know, uh, 60 frames per second. Yeah, whatever, either way, this is how you can add a system D, uh, bootloader entry, uh, for your favorite kernel. So you'll never lose it in the shuffle. Uh, thanks for coming on by and have a good day.